Okay, so it's been about an hour and uh, these models have soaked and now we're going to remove the Essex tray uh, from the model. So now we need to actually cure those brackets again to make sure any uh, bond that was not cured through the initial curing process is 100% cured. So now that we have the tray off the model, we're now going to re-cure the brackets uh, directly. So now we need to remove the tray, uh, the inside tray from the outside tray. So we'll use this tool to just kind of help separate the initial. Kind of breaks the seal. Then without stretching the um, the material, just kind of pry it out like this. So there you have the inner tray and outer tray. So if you look down inside there now, you can see that that frosting is starting to crumble. And to kind of help the process of cleaning that out is we use just this same tool, just kind of clean out the dried stuff. And then we will actually soak this again after we micro etch the brackets just lightly to get any of that separated. There's some, there's usually separator that's stuck onto those brackets and micro etching that lightly removes that and preps that for uh, the flowable bond. So now we need to trim the um, hard Essex tray. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna take that same type of saw blade, brand new, um, has only ever been used on Essex, not on stone or anything like that. And we're gonna cut right across the middle of each one of those brackets. I don't know if you can see that, but it's gonna go right across here. So those are just gonna kind of cut those brackets in the sports mouth guard material. So we're gonna to switch to this rough buffing wheel and go all the way around it. Now the reason I use a brand new or a sharp saw like this is because if you melt the Essex while you're cutting it along this edge, it's a lot harder to remove the little spurs and like all this type stuff. But if it cuts it nicely, this tool makes it so much easier.
they've been sand, uh, sandblasted to get any um, residual separator off. But now you can see that there is some um, flash from when they bonded it to the model. I'm going to go and break that off. And the glorious thing about this is we can actually remove those brackets and break off any of that flange with uh, a knife. It's just kind of break that off and now there's this nice clean bracket that can go right back in the tray. There you go. That's it. Now they're ready to go back on the models. So here's the outer tray, inner tray. You can see how it just kind of barely cups those brackets. And then back on the model. Well, I want to thank you guys for watching my video about the indirect bonds. Hopefully, you uh, have learned something. Um, you can take it back to your lab, improve your process, or make your IVs better. Um, if you like the video, definitely give it a thumbs up. Subscribe. Uh, leave some comments down below, good or bad. Uh, anything is great. So thank you, and we'll see you next time.